When you think about a photograph that kind of started in terms of your affinity for the, for, you know, the process, what do you think that would be? The actor Kevin Corrigan sent me a postcard with that famous picture of uh, the circus performer, the little person smoking a cigarette in the rain. That was the first photograph I ever bought, and I thought it really captured a comedian's life really well. It's like right. miserable, <laughs> exhausted right. person. But hilarious. Uh, right. but yeah, it's kind of like funny, but yeah. painful, and, and it, it's, it's very It's so melancholy, that photograph. Yes. But it was also, also, I think, just photographically, like it really had that grainy, you know, dark room, soupy yes. feeling to it, which was, you know, made it beautiful. I like uh, photography where I really feel um, uh, people's energy, like their attitude, you know, in the photograph. So I, I, I bought a few uh, Richard Avedon photographs of comedians when they're very old. Right. So I bought this Groucho Marx a photograph he, he took when Groucho Marx was in his mid 80s. And, and he took another one of Buster Keaton. And, and I, for some reason, I just put them up in my office because I think, like, well, that hopefully is going to be me. <laughs> yeah. This is where it ends. <laughs> You know? A sweet reminder that maybe <laughs> exactly. somebody will take your picture when you're that old. Hopefully, I mean, I don't know. They don't. Neither of them look that happy. But I know, just it's like, oh, I guess this is the path, and maybe I could be a little happier than well, those they made two a guys. lot of other people happy. Exactly. Here we come to fishbowl. Very exciting moment where we get to ask each other really important questions. Okay. And come back with uh, just snappy answers. <laughs> What's something you hope to photograph but haven't yet? Snowden. <laughs> um, do you, when something like that happens, do you think, oh, it'd be great to be able to, to t talk about that and make a, a cover for that? It is almost the extension of the uh, Abu Ghraib. Yeah, I think you become, I mean, if I was to line up my images from the time I started drawing, doing drawings for the, um, how I paid my way through art school is doing drawings for the uh, opinion page of the LA Times on Sunday. Mm -hmm. from, I started when I was like 20 or something. And if you lined up my work, it's a kind of chronology of the world's like ills. And I start with, you know, um, um, Iran, con well, Iran counters later, but I mean like uh, uh, bombs for uh, hostage release, and then it goes through AIDS, and then, it, you know, AIDS starts with um, in all the different incarnations of AIDS. And, and so basically going through this thing, so it almost became like this visual timeline of all this stuff. So I got in this groove of just expecting that, you know, the busiest week I ever had in my career was after 9-11. I ended up doing the cover of Esquire, Sports Illustrated, some stuff for LA Times, thing for uh, New York Times. So what happened was is that in my own way, I was completely powerless to what was going on, but this is what I did. And my friends were in there, they'd already had their covers, and they said, we gotta junk this cover and we gotta change it. So not only could I get my statement and my feelings and emotions out about what happened, which is, but in some really very, very small part, I was able to, what I do was able to be lent to the process and help my friends, because um, they were all in here in their offices and the mm -hmm. buildings were literally smoking while they're um, you know, trying to lay these mm. pages out and do their job. Judd. Mm -hmm. What's the funniest photo you've ever seen? This isn't the funniest picture I've ever seen, but just a very funny one it was the Arch Driver uh, picture for the 40 Year Old Virgin poster. Oh. Was a, you know, that was the first movie I directed. I wasn't even at the photo shoot. I didn't even know what they were doing. Really? And, and then they just like one day I went into the offices of Universal and they just showed me the poster, which I guess was kind of based off like a, a strange looking Mentos ad from Europe or something, <laughs> and. It's kind of, it kind of sold the whole movie, this like the look in his eye, and Steve is so funny, and Art just captured something that when you put the billboard up, even though Steve wasn't a star, people thought, oh, I need to see this oh, movie. There's yeah. something going on with this guy. Yeah. And, uh, and I also love the picture you took of um, Sasha Baron Cohen in his uh, green bathing suit. <laughs> is, uh, in his, uh, in his uh, thong? <laughs> I feel like uh, I'm the luckiest man in the world today to be able to sit with two of my friends and two people that I respect so much, Matt Mahern, Judd Apatow. Uh, just delightful people in every way, and thank you for being so open and sharing with us on Capture. Thank, <laughs> thank, you. You. thank, thank you. Thank you. How do you not kill each other? How do yeah. you get along with other people? And maybe if I felt like I resolved some of that, I would like, 
add the other elements, but I, still, I don't know if I ever will, because I'm so lost and spiritually lost. I don't, like, I don't have answers to anything that I love watching people try to figure it out. The busiest week I ever had in my career was after 9-11. Not only could I statement my feelings and emotions out about what happened, which is, but in some really very, very small part, I was able to help my friends, because um, they were all in here in their offices and the buildings were literally smoking while they're um, you know, trying to lay these pages out and do their job. That was the first photograph I ever bought and I thought it really captured a comedian's life really well. It's like right. a miserable, <laughs> exhausted right. person.